we've heard that some Southern um, African nations have the opposite problem. They've been so successful in conserving that they're actually, the image we get is that they're overrun <laughs> by these large creatures. And so we'd like to hear whether um, from the South, you consider this a success, what might have led to this experience, and how you explain with your extensive um, research experience, Dr. Mogende, uh, how you explain this phenomenon and what you think about it, and if there's any light you could shed on the politics and economics of Botswana's experience. I think it's, it's also policy, it's prime policy on tourism, particularly the high cost, low volume tourism model, which is more so of a greener model. So this sort of model, it aims to minimize the ecological footprint in Botswana's conservation areas by attracting high fewer paying tourists who mostly emanate from the global south, from the global north, emanating from Europe, US, China, and so forth. So the reason why the government came with this policy, I think it was implemented in 1990, and it was trying to deal away with mass tourism that we have seen being experienced in countries such as uh, Kenya, for instance. So it was trying to sort of alleviate that particular problem and also to try to protect fragile ecosystems that we have. For instance, the Okavango Delta, which is the Ramsar site, is a wetland of international importance and also that sustains these elephants that we have. So this is one of the policies that, uh, the policy that I think also had played a particularly crucial role in terms of protecting the ecosystem and the wildlife resources that we actually have today, which now tourists from the global north are actually interested in viewing these particular products that we have. Mm -hmm.